The concept of systemic racism often emerges in discussions, raising questions about the mechanisms by which racial ideologies are perpetuated. As critiqued by some, one such mechanism is the public education system, particularly through its teaching of evolutionary theory as a conclusive fact, which some see as contradictory to biblical accounts of human origins. Turning to biblical texts for insights into human diversity, references are made to significant scriptures. For example, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45 refers to Adam as the first human, and Genesis 3 verse 28 explains Adam naming his wife Eve, the mother of all living. Acts 17 verse 26 further emphasizes the unity of humankind, suggesting that all nations of men are descended from one individual, proposing a singular human race originating from Adam and Eve. This perspective finds an unexpected echo in scientific findings, notably the Human Genome Project. As the project concluded in 2000, it revealed that humans share a remarkably uniform genetic makeup, underscoring the notion that there is essentially one human race. This conclusion aligns with the biblical view of a common ancestry for all humans, bridging faith and science in this aspect. Now, you may be wondering, where did Cain get his wife from if we all come from two people? To answer this question, we need to look at biblical history and science. The mechanism of DNA replication is a fundamental process in which DNA makes copies of itself. However, in a world affected by various factors, this replication is not flawless. Over time, similar to how a garment might wear out, DNA copies can accumulate errors. When it comes to inheritance, we receive half of our DNA from each parent. Normally, if one parent passes on a defective gene, the body's cellular machinery tends to utilize the healthy gene from the other parent. However, the likelihood of inheriting the same defective gene from both parents increases with closer genetic relationships. When this happens, individuals have no alternative but to inherit the mutated gene, leading to significant health issues. The risks associated with marrying someone genetically similar include a higher probability of severe birth defects due to the sharing of these mutations. Initially, according to some beliefs, such mutations did not exist. The concept is that the first humans, being created without flaws, would not have experienced genetic errors. However, following the event known historically or religiously as, the fall, the situation changed dramatically. This marked the beginning of a gradual accumulation of mutations within the human genome, a process that continues rather than occurring abruptly. Today, mutations continue to accumulate in the human genome, gradually increasing over millennia. It was approximately 2,500 years after the initial creation that changes in societal norms regarding marriage were documented. At this point, Divine directives were issued to halt the practice of marrying closely related individuals, a practice that was once common and unproblematic due to the lower mutation rates in earlier populations. Initially, the concept of marrying someone closely related did not pose the ethical or health-related concerns it does today. This was largely because the accumulation of genetic mutations had not yet reached a critical threshold where such unions would result in adverse consequences. The establishment of laws governing marriage came significantly later, emphasizing a divine origin for these regulations, suggesting that figures like Cain might have married within his immediate family to ensure the continuation of the human race. The notion that we are all interrelated remains relevant today, despite visible differences among populations, such as varying skin colors. These differences, while noticeable, stem from complex genetic factors. The diversity in skin color, often perceived as markers of distinct races, actually reflects a rich tapestry of human genetics and evolutionary history, challenging simplistic interpretations of human variation. Melanin plays a pivotal role in determining skin color, which can be simplified into two types for this explanation, A-type and B-type melanin. Each person inherits a version of the melanin gene from each parent. The presence of a dominant gene, represented as A, leads to the production of a substantial amount of melanin, while a recessive gene results in lesser melanin production. This variation applies similarly to both A and B types of melanin. 
the combination of these genes contributes to the diverse spectrum of human skin colors. Considering hypothetical ancestral figures like Adam and Eve, it's plausible to suggest they possessed a medium brown skin tone, having a balanced mix of dominant and recessive melanin genes. This genetic makeup would allow for a wide range of skin color variations in their descendants. An illustrative example of this diversity can be seen in families with parents of significantly different skin tones, producing children with a gradient of skin colors. Such phenomena underscore the vast genetic diversity within families. Moreover, the case of twin sisters with markedly different appearances, yet sharing the same parents, challenges common perceptions of race based on skin color. Despite their contrasting looks, they are genetically similar, illustrating that racial categories often fail to capture the complex genetic realities underlying skin color. This diversity reflects variations of the same basic genetic material, not fundamentally different categories, highlighting the continuous nature of human skin color variation. The idea that humanity constitutes a single race, unified by common ancestry, aligns with biblical teachings, emphasizing the concept of one race, one blood. This perspective inherently challenges the validity of racism, proposing that, from a biblical creationist standpoint, racism is illogical. How can one justify prejudice within a species universally acknowledged as kin? This notion serves as a potent, unifying message from biblical scripture, transcending beyond mere skin color to encompass all human diversity. Human variation extends to features like eye shapes among other characteristics, showcasing the rich diversity within the human species. Despite typical associations of certain traits with specific people groups, we often encounter individuals who embody a mix of these features, suggesting a complex interplay of genetics and heritage. For instance, an African woman with eye features typically associated with Asian ancestry highlights the superficiality of racial categorizations. Racism finds no support within the biblical framework, nor does it reflect the underlying realities of human genetic diversity. The Bible even addresses the historical dispersal of people groups, as illustrated in the story of the Tower of Babel from Genesis 11. This narrative explains how humanity, initially sharing a single language and living nearby, spread across the earth, leading to the diverse cultures and languages we see today. Such accounts underscore the interconnectedness of all people, challenging the foundations of racial discrimination by pointing to our shared origins. From Genesis 11 onward, the narrative describes humanity's ambition to build a city and a tower extending to the heavens, aiming to achieve fame and avoid dispersal across the earth. This endeavor was contrary to divine intent. Observing their unity in shared language, God recognized their potential to accomplish anything they envisioned. To prevent this, God decided to confuse their languages, making it impossible for them to communicate and cooperate on their project. Consequently, the construction was halted, and humanity was dispersed across the globe. This event led to the naming of the city Babel, where God introduced linguistic diversity, causing people to spread out and inhabit different parts of the world. This pivotal moment in biblical history illustrates how shared language fosters community and collaboration. In a hypothetical scenario where each group could only communicate within its linguistic boundaries, individuals would naturally form closer bonds and familial ties with those who speak the same language. This principle underlines the profound impact of language on social organization and relationships, suggesting that linguistic commonality plays a crucial role in the formation of communities and the establishment of cultural identities. Research in biology demonstrates that when a large, freely interbreeding population of any species is divided, whether by geographical barriers or other means, distinct physical characteristics begin to emerge within each isolated group. This is due to the lack of genetic exchange with the broader population, leading to a decrease in variability. This concept provides insight into the formation of diverse human groups following the Tower of Babel event, as described in biblical texts. As people were dispersed across the globe, speaking different languages, their genetic isolation led to the unique physical traits seen among various groups today. This phenomenon underscores the idea of a single human race characterized by a rich tapestry of variations rather than separate races. 
Variation within species is a universal biological principle, observable not just in humans but across all life forms. For example, a dog show reveals a wide range of appearances within a single species, dogs, resulting from selective breeding and natural variation. This principle of variation is crucial for understanding diversity but has been misconstrued in harmful ways. Historically, some have attempted to justify racism by misapplying evolutionary theories, suggesting a hierarchy among human groups based on skin color and associating darker skin with being less evolved. Such views are fundamentally racist and scientifically unfounded. The misconception that racial differences signify different levels of human evolution is a gross misinterpretation of scientific facts and contributes to the perpetuation of racism. It's important to recognize and challenge these baseless notions, affirming that all humans, regardless of physical differences, belong to one race, the human race, with inherent variations. The portrayal of evolutionary theories has been widely disseminated in Western education, with even prominent figures like Stephen Jay Gould acknowledging its historical impact. Gould, an atheist and evolutionist, recognized that biological justifications for racism not only existed before 1859 but significantly proliferated after the introduction of evolutionary concepts by Charles Darwin. Darwin's seminal work, On the Origin of Species, published in 1859, primarily explored natural selection and the survival of the fittest, only briefly hinting at human origins with a promise of future insights. Darwin later expanded on human evolution in The Descent of Man, where he speculated on the eventual dominance of civilized races over savage races and the extinction of certain ape species. He suggested a future in which the gap between humans and their closest animal relatives would be greater than the then perceived differences between African or indigenous Australians and gorillas. Darwin's remarks laid a foundation for categorizing humans and apes on a continuum, with racial groups ranked according to an evolutionary hierarchy. This historical context illuminates how Darwin's theories were interpreted to support a ranking of races, inadvertently fueling racist ideologies. Despite Darwin's focus on species evolution, these interpretations contributed to the misuse of evolutionary theory to justify social hierarchies based on race, underscoring the complex legacy of Darwin's work about race and racism. The intertwining of science and racial prejudice became notably pronounced with the publication of Charles Darwin's The Descent of Man. Thomas Huxley, an avid proponent of Darwin's theories and an atheist often referred to as Darwin's bulldog, played a significant role in this development. He controversially asserted that, based on what he considered factual evidence, the average African could not be deemed equal or superior to the average white individual, attributing to whites larger brains and smaller jaws, a clear echo of racial bias that diverged from religious teachings. This era marked the beginning of a disturbing trend where scientific narratives were used to justify racial discrimination. A poignant example of this was Oda Benga, a man exhibited in an American zoo as a so-called missing link, illustrating the extent to which pseudoscience was exploited to degrade and dehumanize. Furthermore, by 1907, even reputable publications like Scientific American participated in this discourse, demeaning the indigenous peoples of the Congo by describing them in degrading and diminutive terms. This period reflects a troubling chapter in the history of science, where biased interpretations and racial prejudices were cloaked in the guise of scientific inquiry, significantly deviating from ethical and factual accuracy. By the early 20th century, educational biology textbooks in the United States began categorizing human populations into a racial hierarchy. Notably, a 1914 textbook delineated five races, Ethiopian, Malay, American Indian, Mongolian, and, deemed the most advanced, Caucasians, described as the civilized inhabitants of Europe and America. This period also saw the emergence of Nazi propaganda films, accessible on platforms like YouTube, that infused such racist ideologies to justify the atrocities of the Holocaust. These films often conveyed messages that vilified the weak in society, accusing humanity of violating natural selection principles by preserving and allowing the proliferation of lives deemed unworthy. 
The propaganda would sometimes juxtapose images of Jewish individuals and those with disabilities with footage of rats, insinuating a need to eliminate these vermin. However, it's crucial to understand that the misuse of evolutionary theory is not the primary issue at hand. The underlying problem is sin, which leads humanity to adopt and justify harmful ideologies. The discussion around systemic racism highlights the existence of institutional mechanisms that perpetuate racism, with the public school system criticized for presenting the theory of evolution as unequivocal truth. Contrary to these divisive views, the biblical scripture Genesis 1 verse 27 teaches that God created all humans in His image, without distinction between male and female, affirming the inherent value and dignity of every individual as bearers of God's image. This scriptural reference serves as a foundational critique of racist ideologies, emphasizing the unity and equality of all humans under divine creation. The notion of humanity as a singular race is being overshadowed by the rise of atheism globally, including in places like Canada. This shift in belief is often attributed to the pervasive influence of secular narratives, exemplified by the 2004 series, Testing God, specifically an episode titled, Killing the Creator. This episode questions the traditional view of humans as uniquely created in God's image, suggesting instead that evolutionary theory portrays us as mere byproducts of natural selection, descended from primitive organisms rather than being divinely fashioned. Such perspectives undoubtedly impact societal attitudes, particularly in academic settings. Traditionally, universities served as institutions where the diversity of disciplines was unified by a common acknowledgement of a creator, as reflected in biblical teachings. For instance, medical ethics were informed by the principle that human life, being made in the image of God, was sacred and not to be terminated by abortion. In contrast, Contemporary educational messages often center around evolutionary theory as an undisputed fact, leading to devalued views of human life. This shift implies a chilling indifference towards the sanctity of life, equating unwanted pregnancies to spare kids with the same casualness as dealing with spare cats or eradicating bacteria from a household surface. The comparison suggests a growing belief that, like bacteria, certain human lives are deemed expendable, mirroring a disturbing trend towards dehumanizing views that undermine the intrinsic value of each individual as an image-bearer of God. The narrative of evolution poses a significant challenge to the biblical worldview, particularly highlighted during a debate where a Christian, who accepts evolution as a mechanism used by God, faced an atheist. The atheist argued that the concept of biological evolution undermines fundamental Christian beliefs, stating that the recognition of evolution as fact dispels the existence of Adam and Eve as historical figures. This assertion has profound implications for Christian doctrine, without Adam and Eve, the concept of original sin, foundational to the need for salvation and, by extension, a savior, is questioned. This line of reasoning leads to the conclusion that Jesus, regardless of historical existence, would be rendered irrelevant in the absence of a need for salvation. This debate extends into contemporary Christian thought, provoking discussions in academic and theological circles, including colleges and seminaries. The representation of Adam as an ape man has become a contentious topic, reflecting the broader conflict between traditional scriptural interpretations and modern evolutionary theory. Such discussions underscore the tension within Christianity regarding how to reconcile the Genesis account of creation, including the literal existence of Adam and Eve, with the scientific narrative of human origins. This ongoing debate highlights the challenges faced by faith communities in integrating scientific understandings with theological convictions. The question of whether Adam was the first human and if he could be considered an ape man touches on fundamental aspects of Christian theology. Galatians 3 verse 28 emphasizes the unity of all believers in Christ Jesus, regardless of ethnic, social, or gender differences, underscoring the inclusive nature of the gospel. This unity is linked to the concept of sin and redemption as outlined in the scriptures. According to Romans 5 verse 12, sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death followed as a consequence of sin, affecting all humanity. This passage establishes the theological foundation that all humans share in the legacy of Adam's transgression. Furthermore, 
Romans 5 verse 18 contrasts Adam's act with Jesus Christ's act of righteousness, presenting Christ as the last Adam, who brings justification and life to all. This dichotomy between the first and last Adam highlights the redemptive role of Jesus as outlined in Isaiah 59 verse 20 and reinforced in Hebrews 2 verse 14, where Jesus is described as partaking in the same flesh and blood as humanity, being both fully divine and fully human. Acts 17 verse 26 speaks to the common ancestry of mankind, created from one man, underscoring the universal applicability of Christ's redemption. This perspective suggests that any notion of separate races unrelated to Adam not only challenges the unity of humanity but also raises critical concerns regarding the scope of salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 21 to 22 further clarifies this, stating that just as death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes through a man, Jesus Christ. This passage cements the theological link between Adam's fall and Christ's redemptive act, making the historical reality of Adam pivotal to Christian doctrine concerning sin, redemption, and the promise of resurrection for all who are in Christ. The scripture teaches that through Adam's fall, death entered into humanity, yet through Christ, resurrection and life are offered to all. As detailed in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45, Adam is referred to as the first man, created to live, while Christ is depicted as the last Adam, bringing spiritual life to those who believe. Furthermore, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 47 contrasts the origins of the first and second man, Adam, formed from the earth, and Christ, who comes from heaven. This distinction underscores the transformative power of Christ's divine nature and mission. The implications of these teachings extend far beyond theological discourse, touching upon the very essence of the gospel and its call to believers. The principle of unity in Christ challenges and opposes the concept of racial divisions, asserting that all humanity shares a common origin and destiny. This foundational belief positions Christians, particularly those who uphold a biblical creationist view, as natural advocates for anti-racism promoting the understanding that there exists only one race, the human race. This perspective not only aligns with the gospel's reconciliatory message but also mandates active participation in fostering unity and equality among all people.